We can create interactive experiences by responding to user-based events. Events are often triggered by the user's interaction with the web page. These would be things like when a link or a button is clicked, or when text is entered into an input box or text area box, or a selection is made in a select box, or a key is pressed on the keyboard, or the mouse is moved, and in some cases the browser itself can trigger the events, such as the page loading or unloading. jQuery enhances the basic event handling mechanisms by offering the events methods for most native browser events. Some of these methods are ready, click, key press, focus, blur, change, etc. Let's look at some examples of how we can respond to user-based events. The page I'm working on is just a basic page that has an H1 and three paragraphs. Each paragraph has its own unique class. In regards to my CSS, I have a class of highlight that is currently not being used, but we will be using this a little bit later on in this example, as well as some basic formatting for the elements on my page. We'll start off by simply using the document ready event. We've been using this all along. If we go ahead and make an alert that happens when the document is ready, then that particular alert is going to be triggered as soon as the event has been fulfilled. So if we save our page and refresh, you can see that I get an alert box and it states, hi there, the document is ready and now the alert is going to display. We use the document ready as an event to manipulate the page safely with jQuery. The code within the document ready event will only run one time once the DOM is loaded. In general, in regards to jQuery, we have four main categories of events, mouse events, keyboard events, form events, and document or window events. Let's go ahead and look at some of these. We'll start off by looking at mouse based events. A mouse event is fired when the user clicks on an element or they move the mouse. This is one of the most commonly used jQuery events. We're going to make it so that when the user clicks on the click paragraph, we will do something to this particular element. Let's go ahead and let's select the paragraph called a click. We're going to go ahead and specify a click event and the click event is going to be followed by a function. You can think of a function as a set of instructions. What do we want to have happen when the paragraph has been clicked? We're going to go ahead and we're going to pass in a keyword of this. This references the element of where the event is currently being delivered. So in this case, it's going to refer to the click paragraph. Then we're going to go ahead and simply tell this to slide up. If we save our page and refresh in the browser, if I click on the click me paragraph, you can see how it ends up sliding up and disappearing. I'm going to refresh my page. And if I do this on any of the other paragraphs, nothing happens. It only affects the first paragraph. And that's because we went ahead and specified that this event be tied to the click paragraph. Let's go ahead and try another event on our double click. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a couple returns. These separate events can all exist inside the same document ready function. We're just going to be passing in different selectors with different events attached to them. Do something similar to what we just did on the first paragraph. Instead of using a click event, we can use a double click event. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my double click paragraph. Then we'll go ahead and we'll attach a double click event to this particular element. And I'm going to pass in the function. This is the set of instructions that I want to have happen. Once again, we're going to target this, the element that we're attaching the event to. It is worth noting that when we use the keyword of this, we do not need to use quotation marks around it. It is a special word that is reserved for jQuery. So when we use this, it knows it's talking about this particular element. If we save and refresh, you will see if I double click on the second paragraph, the paragraph then disappears. 
let's go ahead and address this hover paragraph. So once again, I'm going to select the paragraph with a class name of hover. We'll go ahead and specify the hover event, and then I'm going to run a function. And we are going to do two things here. I'm going to first of all select this particular element, the element that the hover event is attached to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the add class method. When we use add class, we can force a class to be added onto a particular element. Since we already have a class in our CSS file with the name of highlight, I'm going to add that class to this particular element. If we save and refresh, when I hover over this element, you can see that I get a blue underline that appears underneath this element. Now the background should be turning yellow. So I know that the JavaScript is working since I get the blue underline. If I look in here in my CSS, I added one too many hash marks to the background color. So let's save that and try one more time. And when we hover over this particular element, you see that the background color turns yellow along with the underline. Now, ultimately, what I would like to have happen is when I hover over, I want this class to be added and I want the text to display in this way. But when I hover away from this element, I would like the class to be removed. We can do that with jQuery as well. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go right inside of the curly braces. This is on the hover function. I'm going to put a comma and we'll pass in another function. So I'm going to go function, open close parentheses, open the curly brace, and within the curly brace, we can go ahead and specify our set of instructions. Once again, I'm going to target this particular element. And instead of using add class, we're going to use remove class. Then all I need to do is specify the name of the class that I want to remove. In this case, that would be highlight. If we go ahead and add our semicolons and save our page and refresh in the browser, you'll see when I hover over, we get the yellow background and the blue underline. And when I hover away, it goes away. This allows you to create very sophisticated hover sorts of events. The hover method is kind of a combination of two jQuery events, mouse enter and mouse leave. If you only wanted to target one of these particular behaviors, you could use mouse enter or mouse leave. We'll leave ours as is. The final thing that I want to show you is what would happen with a key press. A keyboard event is fired when the user presses or releases a key on the keyboard. These are commonly used with forms, but I'm going to show you how we can use the key press event on the page. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll select the window. This is going to be selecting anywhere on our window. So as long as the window is in focus, when a key is pressed, then we're going to trigger something to happen. I want to run a function, a set of instructions when the key is pressed, and then I'll specify what it is that I want to have happen. I'm going to simply select my H1 element and then we'll just change the color of it on key press. So I'm going to use dot CSS. We'll pass in the property of color and then we'll pass in a value. And I'll just specify that this is going to be red. Let me add my semicolons. And if we save our page and refresh, you can see that I can still run any of my click instructions and hover instructions. But if I press any key on my keypad, then the H1 is going to change and become red. If you want more information on the types of events that you can use with jQuery, I would encourage you to visit the jQuery.com website, go to the API documentation. Once you're on the AP documentation page, if you scroll down over here on the left, it's going to tell you different categories. So there is a whole event category. And if you click on this, it's going to list all of the different sorts of events that are available in jQuery. If you want more information on any of these events, all you have to do is find the specific event and then click on the event name. It'll take you to a page that's going to give you 
more detailed information on that specific event, as well as a series of examples that show you that event in use. I mentioned before how helpful the documentation for jQuery is. There is a ton of data here, so I invite you to explore more because we're just scratching the surface and just touching upon some of the things that we can do with jQuery.